Welcome to another in the series, Sip and Chat, a place where we talk about the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. It's our pleasure this afternoon to be coming into your homes and to be talking about the goodness of the Lord. Welcome to another in the series, Sip and Chat, a place where we examine life issues, the challenges that we face daily, and believing that there is always an alternative in this life. And so we always seek to provide persons with, you know, tools that are able to empower them and to see them making the necessary changes to become better persons. With me this afternoon is my good friend, attorney at law, JP, social advocate, nation builder and lecturer, also the founder of an informal non-governmental organization that continues to do a lot of work in a lot of communities. I mean, I, when I read her profile, I'm like, is this just one person? <laughs> Welcome, Nardia. How are you doing today? I am well, thank you. Thank you so very much for having me. And I say hello to your viewers as well. It is always a pleasure to have you on the program because we do believe that knowledge is so important and an empowered person is an armed person. And you're an armed in the sense of you're able to, to go to the next level and, and, and do it. So, Nordia, I've always been um, very interested. Um, you always refer to yourself, and we know you're an attorney, but you always refer to yourself as a social advocate. And part of why you're here with us this afternoon discussing the topic about it because is in recent time, there has been an increase in the number of violent incidents um, involving young children. We've had the situation where a mom lost her four kids, a very very horrible incident, one that we, we would wish never even occurred, but the reality is that it did occur. And that's one thing that we have to confront, that it's not a figment of our imag imagination. It's something that occurred that was so real. It was very graphic, and it, it, it continues to affect the minds of many persons today. And then, of course, we have an increase in domestic violence in our society. So it's just like there is something that is just out of line in our community, our community not our societies are not in alignment and there is no way of settling discords anymore in an amicable way. I know that you're a social advocate. Just explain to us a little bit, um, on stuff before you go any further, what exactly is a social advocate? Well, as a social advocate, I speak on issues concerning, and my, my focus area is really on women and children. Mm -hmm. And as a social advocate, I speak on issues that are affecting us as a people, mm -hmm. as a nation, as a race, and those issues that we have to speak about in order to have them being satisfied. So not only even just the negative, but we look at also the positives that are happening within our society that we need to, either we need to amplify them or we need to spread them so that others can learn and become a part of it, as well as the negative issues that are impacting our women, mm -hmm. are impacting our youth, which including our girls and our boys. Because of course we know the future is impacted when we impact the children, whether we impact them positively or negatively. Exactly. We are, they, whatever we feed into them, and whatever the hand that rocks the cradle, which are the women, whatever it is that the women are feeding themselves, and then thereby feeding their children, that is a byproduct that we're going to be receiving. And that is not just in terms of biologically feeding, but no. emotionally. Mentally, spiritually, physically, whatever it is the woman is consuming, she's automatically going to be giving it to. And, you know, it's no coincidence that we have the story of Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. You know, many persons will look at it to say it is because Eve was the simplest of the sex or she was more naive why the, the serpent would have approached her. Mm -hmm. But if we look at it logically, the serpent is wise. And the serpent knows if you corrupt the woman, you corrupt the seed. Mm -hmm. If you corrupt the woman, you corrupt the nation. Mm -hmm. And even a man in his adult stage, because that man was once a baby and once a child, his first response, his first set of instruction were actually given to him by the woman. Mm -hmm. And by virtue of that, she has a greater influence on him. And by, by virtue of that, her children and the nation at large. That is so powerful, the hand that rocks the cradle. Yes. 
it, it, and, and it's so important what you said, Nordia, because a lot of time when people speak about advocacy, yes. they always think that you're just trying to look at the negatives in society yes. and push a cause. No. But it's important to understand as well that part of advocacy is to look what's right, what's working, and as you rightfully say, how can we amplify or promote those things, so to speak. Yes. Now, as we get into this discussion, um, Nordia, one of the things that is really affecting our society is the level of crime and violence. Anger seems to be playing a very pivotal role in our responsiveness to situation. Talk to us. Where does this kind of anger come from? Where, where is this kind of uh, not being able to, to, to amicable resolve situation? Where do you think that is stemming from? Well, I think where we are now, it's a multiplicity of issues. It, it, you know, many persons will come and say the level of crime and violence that we're experiencing in our society. We would think that it is coming from one specific area, but it is in fact a complex thing. It's coming from a multiplicity of area. One, in, in terms of how we groom our children, broken people will always break people. Hurting people will always hurt people mm. and even no, yeah, that is so important because yeah. i think you know it, it, it is important as we because a lot of time we try to put band-aid over stuff and we say oh let us have a little um one day seminar or something and then we forget about it but we yeah. don't understand how embedded some of these things are, are in our culture yeah. that unless we almost kind of reposition the culture re you know just re we look at what we teach and what we embrace yeah. then we're not going to be able to to get. So I want you to repeat that same um, verbiage that you just said just now. Yes. Hurting people will hurt people and broken people will always break people. Wow. Powerful. And so, you know, there's a root cause. There, there are many theories. Some will say it is also a remnant of our colonial history mm -hmm. that we are still traveling with. And by virtue of that, I don't know yourself and your listeners and your viewers, most persons will hear about the Willie Lynn syndrome mm -hmm. and the, which who he indicated that he was a slave master in the British Virgin um, West Indies. Mm -hmm. And he has a foolproof plan as to how to cause the slaves not just to be physically enshackled, but mentally enshackled. And then we ourselves, the former enslaved, will carry it on and perpetuate it for thousands of other years. So we put them against themselves. He says, you point out their differences. Divide and conquer. Divide and conquer. Mm -hmm. And so you find that you see, well, whether or not it is, you know, there, there are also theories as to whether it's, and discussions among scholars, whether it is fictitious or not. But whether or not it is fictitious, the fact is we are seeing, and their society and history have shown us enough policies and systems that have been put in place to divide and to conquer us. And that is so important because even as we look at the whole matter of tribalism, yes. from, from, as you mentioned, colonial time and history, in, uh, history is so important because as if we recall how the slaves got here, it yes. was also that same kind of methodology that was used. Yes. And I remember, I don't remember if it was Oliver Cromwell or one of those persons who said, you cannot have a, an omelet unless you scramble the egg. Yes. So in other words, whatever they had to do to get um, labor for the plantation was what was going to be done. So from very early, I mean, the, descend the, the descendants, which is who we are today, um, our forefathers were all was always exposed to this level of crime and hostility and so on. And the and Middle Passage was pain. also another terrible oh, yes. experience oh, that we yes. can't even live down today. No. And so by virtue of that, there are scholars and historians who will say, that is a part of our colonial history. Mm -hmm. And by virtue of that, we're seeing the divide and conquer strategy where, you know, young men are put against themselves, the older one against the younger one. We see people being divided against as far as color is concerned. I was just going to say that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So what we're seeing in our society today is that whereas initially some of that anger and division came about as a result of just um, tribes against tribe. That, that same kind of spirit, so to speak, has transcended. So no, it might not just be, it might not be color, but it might be class. It might be um, based on wealth yes. and education. And so we segment people. And, that we, and, and then we, even within subclasses, we have other issues that are emerging. Talk to us, Nordia, about some of the other issues that you think are beneath what is happening in our society today. Insecurity is one. And it's a, it's a major factor. Mm -hmm. uh, many persons don't recognize how, how important it is. 
because in our culture, right, it doesn't matter how far you rise as far mm -hmm. as education. Of course, sociologists will tell you education is an in integral part in our movement and mobility for the former enslaved. And so in culture, culturally speaking, it doesn't matter how far you rise, there's always a ceiling based on color, mm -hmm. based on where you were born. And so by virtue... And we still have the gender ceiling. And we still have the gender ceiling. Some have broken but, through some section, but there's still a gender ceiling. Yeah, man, there, there, there's a gender ceiling, a color ceiling, and even within the gender ceiling, so tell, this will tell you, uh, there are different ways in which one moves up the social ladder, mm -hmm. uh, color, class, even within that construct, the color plays a vital role. And we see our people who are bleaching themselves, we see our young men who are engaging in scamming and things like that in terms of wanting the, the wealth and the beauty and the bling that is out there. And for many of them, it is just a way of seeking validity. Mm -hmm. To say I am someone, mm -hmm. I am because not the, this is what society this 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 decides yes. are yes. the 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 the, 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 the what we're going to use so yes. to speak to to assess your success and yes. and and your worth and yes. I want to say I want to say to young people who are out there today that worth doesn't doesn't come by the amount of wealth that you have no worth doesn't worth the worth doesn't come with who you affiliate with yeah. because today. Um, you being an, an an important person in society, I could align myself with you to be validated. But tomorrow, something could cause that relationship mm. to go south, yeah. and then so what happens is that all of a sudden, my I, I depreciate. But I just want to say, as we're also on on air, that the best way to get validation is to find yourself in the Lord. Yes, yes. I think that's so important. Yes. Yes. Until you until you know God, yes. you know and, and begin to deal, delve in the volume of the book, yes. you will not understand who you are. And I think yes. that is so important in how we relate to people. Yes. And, and and also part of managing this issue of crime, violence, and whether it be domestic or against our children, because if a man understand who he is and a woman understand their position in it as well, then some of the things that that is happening. Will not talk to us now about how you feel about that point. Well, I agree with you a hundred percent. Understanding, finding self. If you find yourself, you find God, and mm -hmm. if you find God, you find yourself because the two are intrinsically linked. Right. No, the issue is that you will find that our culture and 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 we we, we can blame our colonial remnants. The fact that we are really young. As a culture, right? right. So Sixty something years old, and that is important too. Yes. Right? So, <laughs> so there, there are many things that we have to develop as a nation and to chart our course. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as the relationship between self and the sexes go, one will find that if we find ourselves, understand who we are, we don't need another person or anything. And this is important for me to also interject it. Because in terms of the gadgets, depends on the phone that you have, the exactly. bag that you, even the bag that you have, or the pen that you have, the cup that you have, the jewelry that you have. People, you know, I have a phone and it's not 100%. And people would say, a person like you, why you have that phone? Listen, because, you see, because your phone, yes. an intangible, yes. now validates who you are. Yes. So it is, it is, it is thought out that if you're of a certain standing in society or you're a certain position in the organization, you should have a certain type of phone. And I think that's the kind of pressure that goes from the from 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 the head yes. straight down to the, in, the, in the society. So in the children, yes. you buy them a pair of shoe. It's not a brand, yes. you know. It's a Pike instead of the brand Nike. You know, it's a it's a it's a TK instead of a CK. Yes. And you have yes. all that kind of of, of 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 challenge going on. But what we're affirming today on the program is that the first part of trying to rebuild some of the things that the constructs that yes. have gone wrong is to understand. Who we are, first of all, as caregivers. Yes. And when we understand our role as caregivers, we try to transcend those values yes. that we want into our children. Talk to us, Nardia, about that and, nurturing process. And and you know, I, I I still want to finish the question, responding to the question as far as the sexes are concerned. Mm -hmm. So you find now that the validity of a person, as you indicated, is based on what you are and what you have. 
So you'll find that the sex now are intermingling and it's not about who the person is. Mm -hmm. It's really sometimes you a, a young man might see a young woman and he likes the bag that she's wearing or the earring or the way in which the blouse fits her at that particular time or the way in which the jeans that she might be wearing fits on her on that particular time. So it's not really her. But it's the fact that of the, the pants that she's wearing or the bag or the earring or the collar dress that she's wearing. Mm -hmm. And then they're entering into relationships on those superficial basis. I was just going to say that those faulty permits. <laughs> yes. And, and women do it too. Mm -hmm. The man might have a particular phone in his hand or driving a particular vehicle. So, and by virtue of that, right. that, is a, that is a basis and the premise on which the relationship begins. But then now coming to, to, to the second question, they are actually intermingling, engaging and creating changes. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want you to move too far, Nadia, yes, because yes. this point is so important. So yes. what we're saying is that the construct in the embryonic stages of the family yes. is also part of the challenges that we're now faced with. It, it, it lies at the root and the cost. Because what the we present. what we what we're being attracted to the form relationships are not solid things, are not no, genuine things. Superficial. They are very superficial, and that yes. is what causes some of the violence because yes. uh, the, the internal violence. Because you see a man, he has a nice flashy car. Yes. And he is able to take you here, there, and everywhere. So all of a sudden, you have found your knight in shining armor. Okay. And then when you get together now, or you decide to say, okay, this is, will be my partner for life, yeah. you recognize that, whoa, in life, I need more than a man with a flashy car. I need yeah. somebody who speaks to me with respect. Yeah. And this is such a powerful well, the, point. Well, the character mm -hmm. of the person. And so now we're finding that. The superficiality lies even in the, or men, we see it, and in the, and you ask about where is this brokenness and this violence and this pain coming from. But if we track and we look at our development, you see where children who are born in the 80s, late 80s into 90s, you are seeing a vast shift in terms of behavioral issues, mm -hmm. in terms of the level of crime and violence and where the pocket that is coming from, it is really coming from those late 80s mm -hmm. to, 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 to late 90s where we are now. Mm -hmm. And so by virtue of that, you're seeing that the relationships and how these relationships were formed, you know, the concept of a lot of girls in a bungalow. So by virtue of that, it, it becomes a game. The super, it's superficial. So therefore, because I want to validate myself to look good in my community as a man, then if I have two, three, four, five women, that is what builds my self-worth and my self-esteem. And your ranking. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so you find now that a young woman who perhaps don't have the social strength in the home, it's the first time she's hearing, I love you or you look beautiful and that genes fit you right. And so in her mind, this is what causes me to get the attention that I want. It makes me feel good. So I need to wear more of these jeans. Mm -hmm. And so if my skirt was short and he says, wow, you look nice, then it automatically, the thought is, it is because of what I am wearing. Well, you got the validation. I need to do it more often. Mm -hmm. And so these are the superficial basis on which relationships in currently in our generation wow. are being formed. And then when the rubber meets the road ah. now with the real day-to-day -day issues now ah. and whichever party, because one of the things that is important is that a lot of time when we talk about, and I've said it on this program before, that a lot of time we talk about abuse, we often think about women being abused and not so much men being abused, but we want to make it clear that we are aware that there are men who are being abused as well as women who are being abused and yes. children children oftentimes becomes the receiver of the relationship that has gone so well that was built on those superficial um, premise. Absolutely. It, 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 Absolutely. It, it, it's a lot of things that are happening out there. And that is the erosion of the family, you see? And so you find, therefore, why is it, and the question is, why is it that the generation that was born in the 60s and the 70s you find that their way of life in terms of their family relationship, you have a mother and a father that has 10 children, but the father comes home, they're building a home, the children are mentally sound, though they might not have all the gadgets mm -hmm. and they might not have all the accolades and, the, and the, the, the resources that we currently have. We have far more resources than they did. So why is it that we're having so many issues with broken homes, broken relationships and broken lives? It's really, it's really something, Nordia, that we have to continue to explore because 
we can't give up hope. We're no, still we here. Can't. There's a generation that's behind us. Absolutely. And I think that part of advocacy is that we have to find out what are some of these things that we can do. So talk to us a little bit about your own role in your day-to-day, -day, you know, work, whatever it is that you try. What are some of the things that you try to do to rebuild some of these edges that have been broken down? So as, as I indicated to my NGO, and okay. I, I go into communities. I work with young women, young men, and young girls. Because we realize that there's a great identity problem mm -hmm. in our country. There's a great social issue. And if we can meet them where they are at the grassroots stage, if we can meet them where they are in the schools and institutions, right? Because we have to come to the understanding that this generation, a generation, have already gone through the gate. It doesn't mean that we're lost. Mm -hmm. It just simply means that we have to come to grip with where we are so that we can save the next generation. And so I go into communities, I go into schools and institutions, and I speak on the issues, and we form programs mm -hmm. around these issues. And not only that, persons who are having challenges, they want to raise the light, they want to raise the bar from where they are to get to the next level. We assist them in doing that. I think it's so important, Nordia, because as we think about trying to build a better community, better Jamaica, we have to understand that unless we get, we are able to deal with some of these foundational issues, Absolutely. we're not going to get very far. No. We're going to, we're going, yes, tomorrow we might have a better GDP, or we might have a, a you know, greater, the dollar might even um, move in a more positive direction, but we're still going to have some of these issues which are going to make us very, very vulnerable. Yes. And what we're saying is that we can't stay in our silos no. and say, oh, it hasn't reached my door as yes. yet. Yes. But we have to, those who are able, yes. have to make themselves available to speak to some of these issues. Yes. And I, I really must commend you on the work that you're doing because yes. it's a lot of work. I mean, the, all of these oh, yeah. things that you do, and oh, a lot of them are voluntary but work, we but we have to do we it. And I implore everyone, in your own space, in your own community, if you see a young woman and she has two, three children, don't chastise her, but assist her with the children. Assist her with her mental, emotional, and spiritual development mm -hmm. so that she can advance to becoming a better mother so that she doesn't have three broken children right. who are going to come and give us the results that we're seeing now. So we have to take up the mantle. Each person, all hands on deck, all mm -hmm. of us have to do something in this sense. So it impacts us, it impacts our economy. It impacts so everything. Know, it it impacts, impacts everything. so many things. Yes. I, I mean, a lot of times, I just want to get to this issue before we close, though, because a lot of our kids are being affected. Um, as you say, a lot of broken relationships and the children are often at the receiving end. Yes. But a lot of times, we want to really advocate that children do have rights and that there are mediums <laughs> that children can utilize or women, too, as well, can utilize if they find themselves in a position where they need help, what are some of the, the, the channels that are available to many, you know, if, if, that you're aware of? All right. So, of course, we do have the Child Care and Protection Agency. Mm -hmm. Under the Child Care and Protection Act, there are several agencies. We have the Office of the Children's Advocate that is there. Mm -hmm. We also have the Child Care and Protection System that are, you can go to your, your police station, your nearest police station, because there's actually a branch that is established there. So if a child is being abused, being molested, then once that report goes in, there's a department that deals with that. Okay. Uh, under, as far as the Child Care and Protection Act is concerned, they're there to deal with those I issues specifically, right? Also, there are hotlines, there are church, and, and I cannot I cannot discount this. The church is also an avenue. That's where I want to go to because I yes. believe that in all that we do, I mean, I, I'm, I'm one of the things that we always repeat is that the Prime Minister said, he has dealt with the hardware. He has tried to empower the police force. Yes. He has formed these agencies. Yes. But the problem is still with the hardware, which means we're now dealing with the spirituality of man. Yes. And so to deal with the spirituality of man, we we'll have to go back to people who are spiritual to, to be able to break some of these vicious cycles that exist within homes. I mean, when we think of Jacob, Jacob was a trickster. And then he, his uncle was also a trickster. His mother also influenced him. So. That to me, Nordia, although some people don't like when we get too spiritual, but we have to call a spade a spade. So the issue of trends and patterns and cycles, they yeah. are real. Oh, yeah. They are real. Yeah. And that is why even on this program, we want to pull in what is happening in the society and say, listen, 
the church has got to come alive yes. in this season. And 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 to I will add, go to the church for social support because mm. oftentimes it's always when it gets bad when mm -hmm. it gets to the, when the police is being involved. But there was something that was brewing from before. Right. If you find that you have a child or children that are showing antisocial tendencies mm -hmm. or children who seem to be having a lot of time on their hands, go and get them in the church and let them participate, find some programs for them, put them in some, in some what do you call it? Some, some youth some groups teams or teams, and, right. yeah, so that they can begin to develop because it, it, it does impact. Many of the people who you see today who are prolific, they started out in the church, right. they get to recite a poem and it builds the confidence, confidence. and you know, it builds the self esteem and the work. I'm, I'm really grateful for Sip and Chat because one of the things that we want to advocate mm -hmm. is that the church cannot lose its purpose, no, the right? Salt the salt lose. cannot lose yes. its savor. Yes. And yes, it is good for us to come on Sunday morning, but when we think about the church we have to think about the whole person Absolutely. because there are broken people in the church as well oh, yes. there are people in the church who need help yes. so i would just want to use this forum here on sip and chat and to all of our viewers are out there to say that the church has got to get back to some core things yes. we've got to know who our members are yes. why do they act a certain way yes. yes we have prayed but sometimes the lord is saying to us we need to get a one-on-one -on -one with this person. Yes. What are the social intervention programs Absolutely. that are in the church? Absolutely. Who is the counselor in the church? Because Absolutely. everything we do, we do, we rebuke our spirit. Yes. But again, if we do not provide the necessary alternative to Absolutely. these people, Absolutely. we're going to be rebuking that spirit over and over and over Absolutely. again. So the church, even in this COVID period, we have got to come alive. Christ said, upon this rock, I build my church and the gates of hell shall not and cannot prevail against it. So, uh, Nardia, as you draw up, <laughs> we have to say that the is, is always too short because yes, there is so much is information. But um, we want to empower our, our members and everyone who views yes. the chat to understand that there is always an alternative. Yes, yes. There is always and an there's alternative. There is always support. And, and, you know, a lot of persons might be apprehensive to approach a church, even if your church has never come to your door. But if you're having an issue, go find the church and make an appointment with the pastor. You don't mm -hmm. even have to be a member of the church. Exactly. But there are counselors and people who are actually inside the church. And more and more to today, so I must yes. say that a lot of churches have trained and qualified yes, persons. The spirit is good enough. The spirit is very good. But I think the Lord, knowledge is also important. Yes. You know, we had lawyers and doctors in the Bible as, as well. So and judges. And judges as Lord, well. The Lord actually <laughs> appointed the first judges. Exactly. So, ladies and gentlemen, it is our pleasure to, to, to be here to share with you, to let you know that your body is a temple of the living God. And no one has the right to mutilate, abuse, and to say, use condescending terms against you. But first of all, you must know who you are. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are royalty. And unless you know that and affirm that, you're always going to be vulnerable. It's so nice to have you again, Nardia. Thank look you forward for to another me. chat. And <laughs> until next time, remember, let peace and love abide. So until next time, continue to walk good as we continue to sip and chat.